JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's weekly market outlook webinar for the week June the 21st until June the 25th. I am Haralambos Pissuros, senior market analyst here at JFD, and I will describe the most important economic releases and events on the financial agenda for the week, for the week ahead. But before we start, let's read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered, considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, following last week's uh, hoggish uh, shift by the Fed, market participants may pay extra attention to speeches by several, by several Fed officials this week as they try to estimate when they are planning to begin scaling back their bond purchases. The core PC index, which is the Fed's favorite inflation metric, may also attract uh, special attention due to that. We also have a Bank of England uh, meeting on Thursday, but on Thursday, but we don't expect any material change in policy this time around. Now let's take things from the beginning, though. Uh, Monday is a relatively light day in terms of economic data releases, as we believe that market participants may pay extra attention to speeches by ECB President Christine Lagarde and New York Fed President John Williams. Taking the ball rolling with ECB's Lagarde, around 10 days ago, the ECB decided to keep all its monetary policy settings unchanged, noting that its pandemic emergency purchase program will continue to run at a significant higher pace. The bank raised its uh, 2021 and 2022 GDP and inflation forecasts, but at the press conference following the decision, ECB President Lagarde clarified that headline inflation will remain below target over the forecast horizon. She admitted that uh, they were somewhat more optimistic about the economic outlook than three months ago, but highlighted that the decision statement was unanimously supported, suggesting that tapering is not on any official's mind at, uh, at the moment. It would be interesting to hear what she has to say now, but we don't expect her to deviate much from what we've heard at the press conference following the, the latest decision. Now, passing the ball to Fed's Williams, we will closely monitor any potential remarks on monetary policy, especially following last week's uh, hoggish shift by the Fed. Remember that uh, the committee left policy unchanged, but signaled that interest rates could start rising in 2023. What's more, at the press conference following the decision, Fed Chair Powell said that there had also been a first discussion on quantitative easing tapering, and that the talks will continue in the coming months as the economy continues to heal. On Friday, St. Louis Fed President James Buller added extra pressure to the markets, bringing equities down the do uh, and the dollar and other safe havens up, saying that he sees the first interest rate increase taking place next year. So he was more hoggish than uh, the consensus. The consensus pointed to two interest rate hikes in 2023, but Bullard sees the first one happening in 2022. So with that in mind, we will be eager to see whether Williams is as hoggish as Bullard on interest rates and uh, uh, also how soon does he anticipate the committee to start scaling, bank, scaling back its uh, bond purchases. We have more Fed officials on this week's agenda, including Fed Chair Powell on Tuesday, who will be testifying before Congress, San Francisco Fed President Mary Daly the same day, and Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostig on Wednesday. Now, as we already noted, Tuesday's main event may be Fed Chair Powell's testimony before the House Select uh, Subcommittee on uh, the Fed's uh, emergency uh, emergency lending programs and the current policies to fight the coronavirus crisis. We don't believe that Powell's words will be much different than at the press conference uh, following last week's decision, but we will look uh, 
uh, for any potential uh, clues and hints on when does he expect uh, tapering to, be to begin and uh, when does he believe uh, interest rates should start rising. As for Tuesday's data, the only one worth mentioning is uh, the US existing home sales for May, which are expected to have declined slightly. Now on Wednesday, we get the preliminary PMIs for June from the Eurozone, the UK and the US. With regards to the Euro area, the manufacturing index is expected to have declined slightly to 62.2 from 63.1, but the services one is anticipated to have risen to 57.5 from 55.2. This is likely to take the composite index up to 58.8 from 57.1 confirming that the block continues to recover from the pandemic-related economic damages at a decent pace. However, we don't expect the euro to gain much on, any, on potentially strong numbers, as the ECB has made it clear that they are not thinking about scaling back their monetary policy support anytime soon. No forecasts are available for the UK prints, while in the US, um, both the manufacturing and services indices are expected to have declined somewhat, but to have stayed at elevated levels, confirming the Fed's hoggish uh, shift last week. As for the rest of uh, the releases, we have Canada's retail sales for April, which are expected to have declined around 5% in both headline and core terms as well as uh, the U.S. new home sales for May, which are anticipated to have increased uh, somewhat. Now, on Thursday, the highlight may be the Bank of England interest rate decision. When they last met, British policymakers kept interest rates unchanged, but they proceeded with a technical change in which the pace of weekly bond purchases slowed down. That said, they reaffirmed that, as measured by the target stock of asset purchases, the stance remains unchanged, adding that the, quanti the quantitative easing slowdown is not a material change and that they are ready to reverse it if deemed necessary. With regards to their economic projections, they expect the UK economy to recover to pre-pandemic levels over the course of this year, while on the inflation front, they said that it may rise above 2% towards, uh, towards the end of the year, but this is likely to be due to transitory effects and thus uh, the rise may prove to be temporary. Given that this is not a super Thursday where we get updated economic projections and the press conference by Governor Bailey, we don't expect officials to proceed with any change at this gathering. We believe that they may prefer to wait for the August uh, meeting uh, to announce any further slowdown in, in, in bond purchases. However, it would be interesting to hear their opinion on the inflation and growth outlooks following the recent strong CPI and GDP data. A more optimistic uh, language could be interpreted as a sign that they are getting closer and slowing further their purchases, which could support the British pound somewhat. Later in the day, we get the final US GDP for the first quarter, which is expected to confirm its second estimate of 6.4%. Uh, now, finally, on Friday, uh, the spotlight is likely to fall on the core PCE index, which is the Fed's favorite inflation metric. The year-over-year -year rate for May is forecast to have increased to 3.4% from 3.1%, raising more questions as to whether the spike in headline inflation is indeed transitory. Seeing uh, underlying inflationary pressures, especially the core PCE index rising well above uh, 2%, uh, this raises questions as to whether indeed the, the spike in inflation is transitory. So combined with last week's hockey shift by the Fed, such an increase may add to speculation that the Fed will have to start scaling back its quantitative easing purchases sometime soon. Personal income and spending are uh, also due to be released. Income is forecast to have declined at a slower pace than in April, while spending is anticipated to have slowed somewhat. Ahead of the income, spending, and PCE data, during the Asian session, New Zealand's trade balance for May and Japan's Tokyo CPIs for June are scheduled to be released. No forecast is available for, for New Zealand's trade balance, while with regards to the Tokyo numbers, we have a forecast only for the core rate, which is expected to have ticked up to minus 0.1% year over year from minus 0.2%. So that's it uh, from me.
Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. I hope you have a great week and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next Monday. If you are interested in more detailed and frequent analysis, you can find me on our YouTube channel from Tuesday to Friday at around 7.30 a.m. GMT. So goodbye and have a nice day. JFT, just fair and direct.